Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I've got an episode of Sniper Sunday, the series where I'll be talking about the recon class and various sniping tactics. We'll be focusing on the M40A5 today and talking about the benefits of rate of fire versus muzzle velocity, which is a big trade-off in Battlefield, and it really changes what you can do with a certain sniper rifle. I'll also be getting the mastery dog tag with this weapon today. I'll be trading off between Rush and Domination, two of the best game modes for getting kills, especially with bolt action sniper rifles. You're going to need to be able to put distance between you and your opponent no matter what bolt action you have, and Rush is probably one of the better maps to do it. As you can see, I'm focusing down some kills on this attack boat out here, and a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that just because they don't have explosives that they can't do any damage to an attack boat. If you can take out the gunners, you can greatly reduce its effect effectiveness at taking out infantry. Now what kind of sniper rifle is the M40A5? Oh, it's just another bolt action, right? All bolt actions are relatively the same. If you can snipe with one, you can snipe with another. Well, that is somewhat true. However, if you're used to one, it can be pretty hard switching over to another. And the M40A5 has actually got some pretty big disadvantages and advantages if you know how to use it right. The biggest advantage of the M40A5 is that it has a 60 round per minute rate of fire. This makes it one of the faster damaging bolt bolt action rifles in the game. And of course we can't give it this huge advantage without giving it a disadvantage. The disadvantage is muzzle velocity, which is probably one of the more important stats with bolt action rifles. The M40A5 has a 480 meter per second muzzle velocity. Compared to something like the JNG90, which shoots 670 meters per second, the M40A5 is going to be pretty awful at long range, unless you're shooting at a stationary target. And even then, you're going to have to aim pretty high above their head uh, in order to get that headshot. Learning the drop off on this weapon is a difficult thing. It's not impossible, and I'm not saying you can't be good with it, but the other faster muzzle velocity bolt action rifles just give you such an easier time trying to hit those heads at those extreme ranges. And honestly, that's really what you want to do with a bolt action rifle unless you're some sort of god who never misses your shots in which case the fastest rate of fire bolt action you can find is probably going to be your weapon of choice so the m40a5 might be the ideal weapon for that type of player but for the rest of us who live on the normal plane of existence and have to deal with our human flaws uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky dealing with the m40a5 my biggest problem with it is trying to hit moving targets because you have to lead at different amounts depending on the range that the player is at. The faster firing bolt action rifles, you don't have to lead as much, so it gives you a much smaller margin of error. And I'm certainly not saying you can't practice and get good with the M40A5 and get really good at leading your targets. The problem is that uh, player movement in Battlefield is just unpredictable. You're never going to know if somebody's going to turn left, then go right, then turn left again. With the M40A5, uh, you're going to miss a lot of those shots where Whereas with faster muzzle velocities, the uh, player's not going to have time to turn around and juke you. You're basically going to shoot him. The bullet's going to get there before he can change his trajectory, and then you're going to get the kill. And because I decided to go for the mastery on the M40A5 today, I pretty much got 250 kills with this rifle during this play session, and that's plenty of time to get comfortable with any bolt action rifle. And I still didn't feel that confident with my ability to hit longer range targets or even moving targets. If I switch over to the M98B, the JNG90, the SRR61, I can nail headshots no problem every single 
the time. I feel confident with those rifles, and especially moving targets, I have a very easy time of hitting them. One of the benefits, though, of the M40A5 is that when you have a moving target, it's usually very risky to aim for the head. I often just try and hit the body, in which case you're going to need to hit two shots, at least follow-up shots, or switch over to your pistol and finish them off with that. But because the M40A5 reloads at a bullet per second, 60 rounds per minute, you can basically get that follow-up shot very quickly, whereas with something like the M90AB, the JNG90, you have a slower rate of fire, and it's going to be harder to get that follow-up shot. But even so, there's few situations that I would pick the M40A5 over the other rifles. If I was relegated to an extremely close quarter situation, then sure, maybe, but even then, you probably don't want to be using a sniper rifle anyway. You'd probably rather have some sort of full auto machine gun or assault rifle. So the benefits of the M40A5 really come in handy when you have a lot of targets at closer ranges. However, I will say that playing Domination on Wavebreaker and then Zavod 311 are probably two of the best sniper maps in the game uh, for the M40A5 or really any bolt action, but the M40A5 will shine here because uh, you can take advantage of rooftop camping and little nooks and crannies and basically funneling or the lack of cover of the enemy team. I gotta say, rooftops on Zavod 311 are just ideal if you can put down some claymores, even get some teammates to watch your back, make sure nobody's coming up the ladders. You you can just have a shooting gallery at the enemy team. It's like just practicing your aim on moving targets. Now fortunately or unfortunately, depending on what kind of classes you prefer to play, there aren't a lot of maps like this. So you gotta play on the ground, you gotta play on the same level as other players, and really just exchange fire with people who have full auto assault rifles and hoping that you can get a lucky headshot in there, or that they're far enough away that they can't hit you accurately. And that's unfortunately the life of the recon class with a bolt action sniper in most situations. So the rest of your kit as a recon actually becomes very important. Do you want to use C4 to try and deal with crowds of people in close quarters or deal with vehicles? Uh, you might want to carry motion sensor grenades so that you always have an intel advantage over your opponent, you know where they're coming, and then make sure you use that powerful sidearm. I make sure I use the 93R and I've been using it suppressed recently because it gives me a lot of flanking options rather than trying to flank around and get some bolt action kills and get spotted right away and have the team turn around and just waste me, I can switch to the suppressed 93R and usually get two or even three kills on a nice little flanking route. And here we are coming up on the mastery tag kill, get a nice little payback kill, and then the guy coming up to revive this dude, I managed to hit in the head, but missed the revive kill. And I was running with the 14 times variable zoom optic, which I got some use out of, but I have to say if I was relegated to only using the 8 times scope, it would be just fine. Trying to engage people at longer distances with this gun is difficult. Having a 14 times zoom is not going to be that big of a difference than an 8 times zoom. Anyway, I have a hard time recommending the M40A5. It excels at things that is just not my playstyle for a bolt action rifle. If it is your playstyle to try and get up close and personal and get those quick shots, those no scope shots, and maybe even hit fire a little bit by putting a laser sight on here, then by all means use the M40A5. It's just not something that I personally like to incorporate into my playstyle when I'm sniping. I like to create as much distance between me and my target as possible. Anyway, that wraps it up for this episode of Sniper Sunday. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.